Hello, everybody. Welcome to our YouTube channel called Fast CPA and Consultants. I'd like to introduce our CPA, Fulton Abraham Sanchez. Welcome, Fulton. Thank you, Tara. If you're here for the first time, we created this series called Tax Talks, where you send us your questions through email or social media. And today's topic is taxes for foreign real estate investors. And the first question we have is, when buying a home, what is taking into account as a deductible in my tax report as a foreigner? Okay, if you're a foreigner and you buy a home in the US, there is no tax deductions unless you rent it. If you rent a property and you have income and you earn income for the pro from the property, then the expenses that you have for the property, the insurance, the, the uh, property tax, the depreciation, that is a deduction that reduces the taxes that you pay. Uh, now, this is income tax. Remember, when you own a when you own a property, you have to pay taxes for the property to the county in each of the counties in the states of the U.S. If you rent the property, you have to pay rent. Um, uh, you have to pay taxes for that rent, meaning for that income. For the in that's what I call, what's called, called income tax. If you do not rent the property and you only own it for yourself, you cannot deduct the taxes paid for the property or the insurance or the depreciation of renting. You need to have income to deduct any of the tax, any of the expenses, including the property tax and insurance and any other tax related to the property. Understood. Next question, what steps should I take to sell a property if it has never been included in a tax report as a foreigner? Uh, if you're a foreigner, the first thing is that the closing company, the closing, the, the attorney, the one, the attorney doing the closing or the, or the title company doing the closing, they're going to impose or they are going to withhold up to 15 percent of the of the sales price of the property that's something that is called FIRTPA f-i-r-r-t-p-a FIRTPA this is a this is not a tax but this is a withholding that is sent to the irs and you have to apply for a tax id personally and pay the taxes for the gain for the capital gain on that property and receive the refund. That is the process from the, from the point of view of the taxes that you have to file a form, you have to apply for a tax ID, and then you have to claim the refund after paying the taxes with the objective of complying or fulfilling the requirement from the IRS. There, there are also other, other steps, for example, when you want to sell the property, uh, when, I'm sorry, when, when you are going to, yeah, when you go to sell the property, you have to hire a, a real estate professional, real, a realtor, you have to hire a realtor, the realtor will list the property, the property will be shown to all, to potential buyers, one buyer, the buyers will submit the offers, you will select the, the offer, the winning offer, and uh, the buyer and you will sign on a, a contract to to, port, to 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 sell the property, and one once that is given, the buyer needs to transfer the money to the title company or to the attorney doing the closing. The the title of the the title company or the attorney doing the closing will withhold the 15% of FERPA from the sale of the property, from the amount of the sale of the property, and will submit that to the IRS. Will give the difference to you. You can, you can file a tax return at the end of the year, claiming the refund and paying the tax. That is the process when you are a foreigner and you need to file a tax return. And then you need also to apply for a tax ID because you need a tax, a, a tax ID, a tax ID number to file a tax return. Understood. Next question. What is the benefit of having a company before buying a property in the USA? The benefit is that you have what is called asset protection. The asset protection 
or, or also limits the liability protection. It means that if some if there is any accident in the property and and there is a lawsuit, the only amount compromised in the lawsuit will be the amount you invested in the property. And the rest of your personal property in the US or real estate property in the US will not be touched. Understood. What is the minimum number of people you need to open an LLC for real estate investors? Okay, it could be one. It could be one person, but that will be a disregarded entity, no limited liability protection. If you open one with two for real estate investments, um, that will give you the limited liability protection, and it will be considered it will be considered a separated entity from the from uh, from yourself, but it needs to be two people, Understood. or, or it needs two partners. Okay. Next question: Can a CPA work with investors out of your state? Yes. Um, CPA, unlike the attorneys, they are able to take or help clients from other states because they are they are uh, they are licensing in one particular state, but they also file taxes and they represent clients before the IRS. That is a federal institution. That's why they can file taxes in different states for that state and also for the IRS. Got it. And our last question, can a CPA start strategy planning in terms of transport? Can a CPA start strategy planning? Oh, uh, I'm assuming that this is in terms of transportation, um, that the IRS, that many real estate investors claim when they have or they manage properties. Uh, the strategy for, for this uh, kind of expense, because the objective is to claim the expense for the transport, the transportation, the expenses for the transportation that the person had or the, the, the owner of the property had for visiting the property and managing the property. And then, yes, the strategy there will be to have a record, a written record or a printed record of the the time and the dates and the amount of time that the owner of the property has visited the property with the objective of managing. And that will be assigned a value per mile, for example, if there is a number of miles that the, that the, that the owner of the property driven, has driven from one place to another, from, from his place to the place of the, of the property, that can be uh, multiplied by a, but the number of miles, the total, the total number of miles in the year can be multiplied by a, um, um, a mile a cents or a mile value that the IRS is given, and that will give us an amount. So the number of miles times, let's say, 55 cents, 35 cents, whatever is the number the IRS has given in that year, it will equal an amount, and that amount will be deductible. That will be a strategy in terms of transportation. Understood. Those are all, are all of the questions for today. Thank you, Fulton, for your information and the details. If you have any more questions, you can send them to our social media and email. We do have a favorite group on Facebook. We're going to put the description down below, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.